first of all, we'll start out by talking about what are zebra mussels. Zebra mussels are Dracaena polymorpha, come from the mollusk phylum of invertebrates, which also include squid, octopuses, and snails. Zebra mussels are commonly referred to as bivalves, or bivalvia, which refer to the two separate sides of their outer shell that open and close. The name zebra mussels comes from the dark striped pattern on the outside of their D-shaped shells. They range in color from light tan or beige to vivid, with vivid dark stripes to dark brown which masks the shades of their zebra-like pattern. Zebra mussels attach themselves to solid surfaces by the use of their bicell threads. The average size of zebra mussel is around 30 to 40 millimeters with some reaching an average size of around 50 millimeters. An average lifespan for zebra mussels is around 3 to 6 years. Zebra mussels originated from lakes in southeast Russia and most prevalently the Black and Caspian Seas. They entered Canada by attaching themselves to the ballasts of ships from cross-Atlantic shipping. The first discovery of zebra mussels in North America was in the year 1988 in Lake St. Clair and Lake Erie. They entered from ballast water dumping from large ships in the Great Lakes. The ships fill up the ballasts with water to keep stable during the voyage. Most of the zebra mussels, especially the villagers, which are the baby zebra mussels, are sucked up in the ballast water and travel across the Atlantic through the St. Lawrence and into the Great Lakes. Zebra mussels have very adaptive qualities which make it easier for invading foreign environments and for successfully reproducing in those foreign environments. Female zebra mussels are capable of producing between 40,000 and 1 million eggs per breeding season although they may experience up to 99% mortality rates as juveniles. Larvae are microscopic and are commonly referred to as viligers, and emerge several hours after the eggs have been fertilized. Viligers swim by means of an organ called a villum, feeding on plankton until they reach about 3-4 to four weeks of age until they become heavy enough to sink to the bottom, which is usually around September, and by the use of their bias strands attached to a solid surface. These juveniles have been known to spawn in water temperatures as cold as 3.5 degrees Celsius in Lake Ontario, but thrive in conditions around the 20 to 25 degrees C range. The preferred habitat of the zebra mussel is a freshwater ecosystem and they thrive at a depth from 2 to 7 meters, but they can also live at a shallower depth. Calcium is the limiting agent in determining where the zebra mussels will invade and colonize. A level below 8.5 milligrams per liter can limit growth and the zebra mussel will reach a peak growth at 32 milligrams per liter. The pH levels preferred are between 6 and 8.5. The dissolved oxygen concentrations are between 4 and 8 milligrams per liter. Shaded areas in lakes, rivers, and streams are the preferred ecological habitat, and zebra mussels will always try to avoid the direct sunlight whenever possible. They can and will attach themselves by the use of their biases to any solid surface which, are sub which is submerged. Since the phenotypic plasticity, and which is the ability of a species to change its biological and chemical properties to adapt to a new environment, is fairly high, these parameters do not always apply to the mussels. The zebra mussels are affecting the ecosystem in many different ways. They are filtering contaminants in our lakes which increases the photic depth. This means the mussels are making the lake look clearer and not as turbid. This expands the littoral zone, providing more sunlight to rooted plants and other organisms. But a clearer lake does not mean it's healthier. There are many negative effect effects that go along with this. These mussels filter out large amounts of phytoplankton, but this is a food source for many species of zooplankton. Zooplankton is an important food source for young fish such as the poria, which is a shrimp-like organism that lives in the bottom mud. Since the invasion of zebra mussels, there has been a decline in numbers of diporia which normally make up to 70% of the living biomass in the healthy lake bottom. Species like whitefish and other prey fish, including young lake trout, alewife, bloater, smelt, and sculpin, directly depend on diporia as a food source. This could further have an impact on sport fish such as adult salmon, trout, and walleye. Scientists also found a link between zebra mussels and the occurrence of toxic blue-green algal blooms called microstasis. Microstasis can produce toxins that can impact aquatic organisms, wildlife, domestic animals, and humans that drink or ingest the algae in the water. In response, blue-green algae can cause taste and odor problems in municipal water systems. 
This graph shows the baseline conditions before zebra mussels were in introduced into our water systems. The impact of the zebra mussels showing the increase in the blue-green algal blooms in the summer months when the zebra mussels are most active. Zebra mussels will cover and stick to almost any hard surface including rock, metal, rubber, wood, boat hulls, native aquatic animals like crabs or crayfish. In some areas, populations of native clams have significantly decreased or completely disappeared due to the mussels colonizing on top of the clam shells, preventing from them, them from opening and closing. This makes respiration and feeding difficult for the native clams. These mussels will also stick to navigational markers and fishing buoys. After accumulating enough, it causes the buoys to sink in some instances. Fishing gear like traps and gill nets can also collect enough mussels to make the equipment useless. Hulls of ships and sailboats become so infested that sailing efficiency can become impaired. They also colonize in industrial, boat and domestic water intake pipes, reducing or even preventing flow rate. These mussels also directly affect humans by washing up on the beaches, creating a foul odor and unpleasant sight. Also, when walking through shallow beaches, humans have to be careful as not step on the mussels as they are very sharp and can cut your feet very easily. When the mussels filter the water, they remove the contaminants which become concentrated in their tissues by up to 300,000 times, which is due to bioaccumulation. This is bad for organisms that feed on the mussels like duck species, such as lesser and greater scop. These contaminants affect the survival and reproduction success of the ducks. Round gobies are also feeding on zebra mussels, which are accumulating contaminants in their tissues, which may be passed on to sport fish species. There are also positive effects that come along with the mussels. Each mus mussel is able to filter about one liter of lake water per day. A recent decline in the population of zebra mussels can be linked to the rise in populations of quagga mussels. Quagga mussels are more tolerant to colder temperatures and can live at greater depths than zebra mussels. In 2000, the population of zebra mussels collected in Lake Michigan made up 97.7% of all mussels collected. In 2005, quagga mussels made up 98.3% of all mussels collected. This tra transformation in populations is due to the fact that quagga mussels are much more tolerant to changing conditions than zebra mussels and could cause even more disruption to the natural ecosystem than zebra mussels already have. The zebra mussel's population spread happens so quickly that it is important to take preventative measures whenever possible. These methods have to be known by anyone who is using a boat, whether it be for recreation, travel, or fishing purposes. These mussels will clog water pipes and ruin boat motors and propellers. Boaters should check their boat, trailer, and vehicle, or any watercraft every time it is taken out of the lake or reservoir. We can help prevent the spread of the mussels by thoroughly washing all surfaces of the watercraft with high pressure and hot water. Some other preventative measures include inspecting all exposed surfaces and removing any mussels you find and just throw them in the garbage. Wash the hull of each watercraft thoroughly. Remove all plant and animal material. Drain all water and dry all areas along with the motor. Empty and dry any buckets containing water. Dispose of all bait in the trash. These A study was conducted in Spain in 2011 that concluded when zebra mussels are exposed to small amounts of fluoxetine, it can induce spawning. It explains how at low doses fluoxetine can induce spawning by decreasing the number of oocytes within the follicles in females and reducing the spermatozoa in males, both of which are necessary organs required for reproduction. This lab also explains how there was a 70% reduction of oocytes in females and a 25% decrease of spermatozoa in males after a six-day period. This experiment could bring forth a new method to kill off the zebra mussels and eliminate the problems in our grid. Any time an invasive species is transported into a foreign environment, the effects of its lifestyle are unknown on the native environment. Overall, zebra mussels have had a large ecological impact on the natural ecosystem and have caused major economic problems.